According to his brother Renekton, Nasus secretly reads trashy romance novels before bed. On the flip side, Renekton allegedly grinds his teeth really loud when he sleeps. There's a fun website called Guess the Rank that shows you a bunch of different clips for different games, including League, and has you guess what that person's rank is. Like apparently, this clip was of someone in Plat not iron. Anyways, it's a fun little game to play maybe when you're in champ select. This is a league app that has an entire page dedicated to finding friends to play with so you don't have to queue up with toxic people every single game. You can filter through them and see people's ranks, roles, champions, along with what they like to play, and just a note about themselves. What's also really cool about this app, Professor, is that it has a ton of in-game perks too. For example, it'll even show you live in-game stats about your gameplay. It'll import runes automatically for you. It'll show you the best pro builds available. It has a summoner spell timer, and you can even scout opponents in norms and flex. This is easily one of my favorite apps out there so make sure to try it out for yourself using my link below and thanks bunch professor for sponsoring today's video this is a clip of set that you may or may not have seen already but nevertheless in this clip he builds full ad most of his team is dead and to hold off the enemy team from pushing further he turns around and well does this now the fact he was able to one shot all of them is pretty crazy but what's insane is that with one w he leveled up twice talk about a satisfying comeback just kidding he didn't win did you know that in the old lore lee sin lost his sight from setting himself on fire basically how it went is he wanted to become the best summoner out there and to do that he decided to summon a beast but instead of a beast he summoned a boy but in multiple different pieces kind of like full metal alchemist also in the process of summoning the pieces of the boy that died instantly he also completely obliterated the boy's entire village by the feedback from the summoning ritual yeah so to atone for his sins he decided to set himself on fire for weeks where he eventually burnt his eyes out the most insane part about all of this though is that it was actually inspired by a true story of a real life Vietnamese monk named Tuk Quang Duc, who set himself on fire in protest to the persecution of Buddhists by the South Vietnamese government. Talk about a crazy story. Did you know that in the lore, Zoe stole a key, or if you asked her, borrowed a key from Fiddlesticks? In Surprise Party, Fiddlesticks even has a line referencing this where he says, Nice key you got there, Twilight. Didn't steal it from someone dangerous, did you? And if you look closely at Zoe's splash art, you can even see the key next to her that she's holding on to. One of the rioters also mentioned that the key would unlock something beautiful and terrible in its joy. Here's another fun website called Laudel where you can guess the champion based on hints, quotes, abilities, emojis, or even their splash art. The best mode is probably classic though, and in it, it has you guess champions and it will tell you how many of the categories you got right. It's basically Wordle for League, hence the name Waddle. Anyways, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Did you know that Riot actually put a gaming lounge inside of an airport in Ichon Airport in South Korea? There's a kiosk where you can grab a ticket and then inside of the lounge itself, there's a Valorant side with Valorant stuff, a league side with league stuff and even computers, a mobile area for AR screen games, and even an art zone. It's all completely free and you can even get stamps from doing events, getting awards for each mission they complete in the area. Also, there's even a kiosk screen that tells you how many pentakills have been achieved around the world. Honestly, it'd be cool if Riot even displayed stuff like this in the client. Anyways, it's actually pretty cool and it seems like Korea is always ahead of the game when it comes to stuff like this. A few months ago, Doinbi revealed what his daily schedule was like when he won Worlds in 2019 with FPX, and it went like this. From 10.30 p.m. to 3.30 a.m., he would play rank. From 3.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. he would sleep. From 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. he would play more rank. From 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. he would eat lunch. From 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. he would do scrims. From 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. he would have dinner. And from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. he would do scrims. That's a lot of freaking League of Legends. What do you guys think? Would you be able to follow this schedule consistently? Did you know that a lot of the items in the game are actually references to champions? Like Trinity Force, for example, are Aurelia's blades. The Iron of Locket Solari is Leona's shield. Black Cleaver is Darius's axe. And Gargoyle is Galio's chest plate. Additionally, Dead Man's plate is Gangplank's armor, the Collector is thought to be his gun, Aatrox's arm is Steric's gauge, Stormraiser is thought to be Asuo's sword, and Nasher's tooth is, well, Nasher's tooth. About a month ago, these guys' last free nation created a Pokemon parody of DRX at Worlds, specifically Zeka in his journey to take down the Elite Four, or in this case, other top mid laners. This probably took a crazy amount of effort to edit, but it turned out pretty great. A long time ago, like 10 years to be precise, there was a glitch, or more of an exploit to be precise, where if Darius pulled at the very last second before teleporting or recalling, he would drag whoever he pulled with him into his fountain. Basically a free pentakill. Funny enough, this actually happened more times than you'd think because people would always invade together and sit in bushes. And for reference, this is what it was like to be on the receiving end of this high IQ strategy. Basically, it just looks like you're randomly getting thrown into the fountain for no apparent reason because you can't even see the animation. Man, I kind of miss Old League sometimes. Did you know that according to his lore, Zach actually got his name from a married couple that adopted him. The couple also taught him how to speak after years of living together. Unfortunately, later on though, Zach found his parents killed and 
went on a rampage in anger. But then after he calmed down, he felt bad for the damages he caused and actually helped fix the buildings he destroyed. A long time ago, like eight years ago, someone made a game called League of Darkness, which was an arcade action game where a bunch of minions came in waves on what appears to be a mock-up of Summoner's Rift. Super random, but kind of interesting. Here's some useless info for you. If you could solo Baron at level one, you would instantly go from level one to level four after killing it. Did you know that Draven was originally going to be a weird lizard guy who lived in the jungle and threw axes before he became, well, normal. This was even confirmed by Riot themselves. Actually, before the Gladiator, there was an earlier version again, which was just this weird lizard guy who lived in the jungle and threw axes. This is a bit late, but the most popular skins at Worlds this last year was Mecha Aatrox being picked 32 times, Freljord Silas being picked 25 times, and then Crime City Graves being picked 23 times. According to Wulu, the minimum salary for LEC players is 60,000 euros, and in the LCS, the minimum salary is $75,000, which is pretty insane for a video game. Also, that is the bare minimum salary. The average salary is closer to around $300,000. So if you want to become rich, you should just become a pro player or win the lottery. That works too. Speaking of salaries, players typically earn different incomes depending on what role they play. For example, mid lane is typically the highest paid position, at least within LEC teams. But this also appears to be the case elsewhere too. Honestly, this is something I've never really even thought about until now, but it makes complete sense. I mean, it's pretty much how it works in other sports as well. Go make sure to sub if you're enjoying. Here's your puppy and thank you. Little Knight Amumu's splash art is a reference to the sword in the stone, but instead of pulling the sword out, Amumu breaks it instead. It seems like nothing can go this guy's way. Also, fun fact, if you remember Nikasaur from way back in the day with Summoner's Showcase, this was actually her skin idea. Most of you have probably never heard of these videos because it was so long ago, but a channel named Hyun uploaded some stick figure animations of League of Legends champions, and to me what's craziest about these videos is how much the animations still hold up 10 years later. Definitely worth checking out whenever you get the chance. Rakan loves chocolate, even though chocolate is technically toxic to birds. If you type pink into the item shop, control words will come up and reference to them being called pink wards before because the previous effect was blackout and duskblade will come up because blackout was introduced with duskblade and then moved on to umbral glaive one of you guys actually pointed this out to me but kindred is one of if not the only champion whose icon is not used from their champion spotlight probably because the splash art was just too dark for it also just as a reminder if any of you guys got any useless info feel free to send it to outside joke lol at gmail.com this is probably one of the craziest zoe bubbles you can hit in league period since howling abyss has the longest walls also the fact that kane literally got hit being inside of the wall makes this so much better too. I would definitely be pissed if I was him. This guy took League of Legends and turned it into a turn-based game. What's crazy is it kind of works honestly. I mean if you messed with a few more things and touched it up a bit it's almost believable that it's real. The editing though is actually pretty good. It made little animations, even added in some UI, and also threw in some classic fitting sound effects. Gotta say though Garen's passive in this seems a bit strong so it's probably gonna need a nerf soon. So it's come to my attention that the highest champion mastery points ranking player is actually now a Teemo player from the Vietnamese server named League of Legends. Yes, that is his actual name. League of Legends has over 19 million mastery points on Teemo alone. Additionally, they're also ranked third for the most mastery points in general. They've even already played over 300 games this season on Teemo exclusively. However, the player with the most mastery points total over all champions is this guy with over 23 million. That's enough League of Legends for like five lifetimes. According to Riot, in 2022, we slayed over a trillion minions and it would take 25,000 years for that many minions to spawn. Have you ever wondered what those Chinese titled custom games were in the client? Well, apparently they're used to advertise selling and buying accounts as well as offering boosting services. I guess there's also some e-girl option stuff as well. I ran the titles through a translator and these are some of the things it translated to. A hunk accompanies the package C with the flexible king team prestige. Voice actress sister high scoring hunk accompany her to practice and various new pie skin boxes, fob ball heroes, etc. I'm sure the translator didn't butcher any of that at all too. Anyways, if anything, I wish it was a bit more specific, you know? Like I'd like to know if I get to be the hunk or if I'm the package C. This was a fun glitch that happened not too long ago where the client spazzed out and allowed six of us to queue up together at the same time. Unfortunately, it crashed right after that, but it would have been pretty fun to play 6v5. Not too long ago, there was a glitch that literally allowed you to 1v9. Nine of you ended up on one team and one person was on the other. What's crazy is even the other screens, like the honor screen and the end game screen, registered them as all on one team. And what's even weirder is this seemed to run fairly smoothly, like this was a normal thing. Now, on top of being able to 1v9, you could also 10v0. And even the surrender option was still viable and made sure to still take the majority instead of just four votes. It's ironic that the client seemed to be almost less puggy in this state than when it's just normal League of Legends. Maybe it was just supposed to be a hidden game mode all along. This person a while back created an Udir mod for jungle pets in League of Legends, and I have to say it's pretty amazing. What'd be really crazy is that if Riot actually added in skins for jungle pets one day. It'd be the dumbest thing, but it'd be hilarious and I feel like it would boost the jungle pick rate and be a good money maker for them. Seems like a win-win to me. Did you know that in the lore, Yumi and Book are 
friends with Aphelios' sister, Alun, to actually visit her from time to time in the spirit realm. This guy, Glitchy Bunny, created Yone in Minecraft and actually looks really good. Like, he added in all the abilities, animations, and more. I feel like someday, someone's going to full-on make League of Legends in Minecraft with champions like these. Like, I know some people have already made okay versions, but someone's gonna make a legit version one day. Did you know that Aatrox and Ramada, the new Overwatch hero, share the same voice actor, Ramon Tikaram? He's also done voices in Diablo, Elden Ring, and a whole bunch of other games, too. Here's a list of champions according to autocorrect. I'm a big fan of Kayak and Aurelian Solutions myself. If you ever feel like playing ranked and need motivation to not play League of Legends, someone uploaded a 20-minute loop of the defeat screen so you can save yourself time and LP in the process. I'll leave a link in the description because I feel like some of you will actually need this. For more videos like these, make sure to check out all my other 27 useless information episodes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye. A massive shout-out to my Tier 3 patrons, Stefan Noctec and James. A massive shout-out to Setright for being a Tier 4 patron, and thank you so much to all my incredible supporters as well on this channel. Thanks, bye.